Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discuss about various performance parameters like efficiencies, right? propulsive efficiency and um, thermal efficiency and overall efficiency. But question arises where we will evaluate those efficiencies of an engine? Can anybody tell me? Just to facilitate to answer, I will tell you in the two places one can. For example, if I talk about propulsive efficiency, if the my vehicle is in the ground, right? can I evaluate or when the vehicle is moving, I will have to evaluate. If you look at the definition of propulsive efficiency, the expression for propulsive efficiency, right? you will find there is a flight velocity particularly for air breathing engine and also for non air breathing engine. Right? And if the flight velocity is 0, what will happen to propulsive efficiency? Can you look at your, you know, uh, notes? What you are getting? It will be having no meaning, right? So, therefore, it has to be evaluated all the efficiencies depending on what you are doing at two condition. One is static condition, right? And another in the label flight at the particular altitude and particular flight Mach number for which it is being designed. And of course, other places one can, but these are the two which are being used routinely. Now, we will be talking about another we'll, uh, sta you know, parameter which is quite important that is known as static thrust. Static thrust means like on the ground condition, it is static, it is not dynamic, right? it is not moving, the vehicle is not moving. That means, my flight velocity will be 0. right? If I look at the thrust expression what we have derived, it is having two components, right? One is the momentum thrust, other is pressure thrust, and we can assume for the simplicity the nozzle is fully expanded. So, if it is nozzle is fully expanded, then pressure thrust will be 0, P e is equal to P, right? A. So, therefore, it will be 0, and then if the flight velocity is 0, then we will get static thrust is equal to m dot e v e. So, if you look at basically thrust definition is m dot e v e minus m dot a v a right or v simply I am using plus a e p e minus p right. So, this will be 0 and this is 0. So, we will get static thrust is basically the m dot E V E, right? That means what is indicating? It is indicating that static thrust will be higher or will go on increasing when the exit velocity or the jet velocity from an engine will go on increasing for a particular air mass flow rate, right? Air mass flow rate will be dependent on what? For an air beating engine, it will be dependent on the flight velocity, yes or no? And also the cross sectional area of the engine. Right. Now, <coughs> when you talk about this, whether the static thrust you need to have higher or lower, what you need? That depends upon your what requirement. Is it so? Because you know if something is there in the stationary, you need to make it to move, what do you have to do? Initial thrust will be higher or the force will have to apply more, static thrust will be higher. If a payload is higher, then naturally I need to have a higher static thrust, right? Is it clear? And if I look at this, static thrust will be dependent on what? Exit velocity or the jet velocity from the engine and jet velocity will be dependent on what? You know like I am putting some fuel, right? it will be dependent on how much fuel is getting consumed because I am adding energy 
it will depend upon type of fuel I am using that means calorific values. It will be dependent on also the efficiencies, right. What is that efficiency? Thermal efficiency, how good it is the energy is converted because we are using thermal energy, right. Am I right or wrong, right. So, therefore, that means how much kinetic energy or the energy can, you know being obtained by burning the fuel. So, therefore, we need to look at the static thrust can be expressed in terms of V e exit velocity m dot f that is the mass flow rate of fuel and the heat of combustion of course, which will be dependent on the kind of fuel you are using. For example, nowadays people are thinking of using hydrogen as a fuel in aircraft engine right. Although aviation turbine fuel is being used and now people are talking about using biofuel, biodiesel you know bio not bio bio diesel rather bio aviation fuel right. They are designing it because the fossil fuel would not be there. So, the calorie value will be changing right and it will be dependent on the thermal efficiency because you may burn certain amount of fuel how good it is in converting to the change in kinetic energy that we will be looking at. So, therefore, let us look at expression for thermal efficiency which we have already derived and keep in mind that this efficiency thermal efficiency we have derived assuming that nozzle is fully expanded. So, therefore, you know P e minus P term is not there and the whenever we are talking about static thrust the flight velocity will be you know 0. So, then what I will get? I will get basically static thrust as m dot V e right that is by definition is equal to 2 m dot f delta S c and thermal efficiency divided by V e right. If I assume that certain amount of fuel I am burning right for a particular fuel flow rate and particular kind of fuel let us say for aviation turbine fuel in case of aircraft engine and the efficiency is remaining constant which I mean of course, may not be then the thrust efficiency is inversely proportional or static sorry static thrust is inversely proportional to the jet velocity or what I call exit velocity from the engine. What is indicates? It indicates that whenever exit velocity will be go on increasing what will happen to the static thrust? Static thrust will be go on decreasing right because if V e is in this case is increasing the static thrust what will happen will be decreasing right. And when the other way around if V exit velocity jet velocity is lowering like down and keep in mind whenever we are saying we are saying that for a particular mass flow rate of fuel for particular thermal efficiency and particular kind of fuel then it is valid keep this in mind ok. You should not get confused with that ok, I will vary this thing then I will talk no, right. So, and therefore, it will be other way around suppose I want to have a higher static thrust I will have to decrease the jet velocity keeping of course, the for the same mass flow rate and same th kind of efficient thermal efficiency and same kind of fuel. Based on this right the gas turbine engine can be divided into three categories right. As I told you earlier that based on the propulsive efficiency right people have also defined uh, divided the gas turbine engine rather they have you know innovated three kinds of engine to meet their requirement. For example, I want to take some load like a you know let us say there is a Cargill war right I want to take some ammunition from the land to the war site from interior to the land uh, war site. I love to carry lot of ammunition which is heavy right. So, that means, I need to have a static higher static thrust what I have to do then and also propulsive efficiency should be high. So, I have to go for a turbo prop engine right. Although the exit velocity will be for example, the turbo prop engine the exit velocity from this engine will be much lower as compared to the turbo jet engine right and here the what will happen static thrust will be low right. That means, I cannot really lift or I cannot have a 
you know carry the heavy kind of things right but however i can get a higher thrust right if i get a higher thrust i can move at a faster speed because flight velocity will be higher so it's a compromise you are doing you know so similar way we can get a, in a middle value that is the in between which is being used for the turbofan engines and the ramjet engine you will get you know the static thrust can you get you cannot really get a static thrust right it is impossible why it is so we will answer that question when we will be talking about ramjet what i would observe i would urge you people to look at this figure because second time i am showing this figure and you will find that it is quite you know interesting to look at it so we will start this lecture with a thought process from a legendary sir frank whittle who says the jet engine had like a phoenix risen from its ash the concept was almost dead right and then he and also with the bone owen who is another inventor of this engine they caught it and now we are enjoying the you know their ideas and implementation as engine so therefore if you look at in our culture it is being talked about to become a deuza that means second birth right you should be like a phoenix you should leave all your things and became a person of you know excellence so the objective of education is to achieve the excellence in yourself which is lying hidden on in you so coming back to this like uh, as i told like we have really talked about in the last lecture about what you call uh, thrust expression and then we move to the various propuls uh, efficiencies like propulsive efficiency thermal efficiency overall efficiency then we talked about static thrust now we will be looking at another performance parameter which is known as aircraft range why you were interested to look at range that means or what is the meaning of aircraft range for a particular amount of fuel how much distance it can travel right or how this the distance traveled by an aircraft you know can be alter or can be enhance because you know from the fuel economy point of view right and also the from the ease suppose i can have a higher flight i can use a higher thrust to go at a, at a faster rate but what penalty i have to pay for that is it optimal or not so for that we need to look at the aircraft range keep in mind when aircraft is going there will be uh, ascending stage that means it will take off and go and go in a level flight particularly the passenger aircrafts you know long range passenger aircraft it will be moving at a level flight in a particular height of course there might be a change but if, for us we can assume it to be right and then it will be land so if you look at the aircraft will be taking off from the ground you know let's say this is the ground kind of things right this is your aircraft which is lying kind of thing right right and it will be moving you know like it is ascending and this will be level flight and this will be descending that means this is known as a level flight keep in mind that this portion is a very small time and this is for the this portion this is descending you know this is ascending phase phase or take off kind of things so therefore this level zone is the highest or the larger amount of time you spend on the level flight particularly for long range passenger aircraft right so therefore those portions are not very important we are not considering however in the complete thing one has to but what assumption in this level flight what is really happening when the aircraft is flying level like at one high altitude in a you know what is happening there you don't have much acceleration right here it will be accelerating and there it is decelerating right in the descending phase and then in that case the drag is equal to the thrust right and the lift is equal to the weight of the vehicle so this is the 
condition what is being we will be looking at that means the thrust is equal to the drag in the level flight and we can write down L is equal to D by L right. I can basically this is D by L or in other words it is L by D right lift and drag ratio and what is the lift? Lift in the level flight is basically what m g m is the mass of the aircraft g is the gravity which is acting. So, <coughs> what we will be doing now is that we will have to basically find out thrust power how much power is equal to do that and by definition thrust power is equal to thrust into the flight velocity right. That means, T into V that is your thrust power right this is your thrust power is equal to T into V or into m g V L by D right. So, what we will have to do? We will have to look at this equation 19 can be modified using what? Using your overall efficiency because if you look at overall efficiency is nothing but thrust power ratio of thrust power and the amount of fuel or the amount of heat released right due to combustion due to burning of the ATF aviation turbine fuel in case of aircraft, but in a rocket engine there might be several kinds of fuel. So, what we will be using? We will be basically looking uh, I mean putting this clubbing this together and what I will get in place of T v I can write down eta overall into m dot f delta S c right. Then I can write down m dot f is equal to m g v right and eta delta S c L by D right ok. So, in place of basically T v I am writing, so it will come out of this. So, what is saying? It is saying that mass flow rate of fuel or mass consumption of the fuel will be dependent on the mass of the vehicle flight velocity and inversely proportional to the overall efficiency and heat of combustion of course, the lift and drag ratio right. If the lift and drag ratio is higher what will happen? The mass flow rate of fuel or the mass consumption of the fuel will be reduced which is always of course, keeping other things same right. So, then it is desirable to have. So, uh, but the mass fuel flow rate can be expressed in terms of flight velocity. How we will do that? Because if you look at a, a long range passenger aircraft is there and once it is on the flight level flight condition right, what will be change in that mass? Mass of the aircraft will be changing or not? It will not be changing because the fuel is getting consumed. So, we have fuel is getting consumed and it is consumed as a very little faster rate you know let us say Boeing which is carrying maybe nowadays of course, it is a bigger one you know 500 people or 700 people can carry right 800 people. So, it that means in so much of you know fuel has to be consumed it is a very big aircraft. So, if it is coming in this case that consumption of the fuel will be very high and it will be reducing because you are getting consumed and living to the atmosphere freely you know right and polluting it also. <laughs> then, <coughs> then that mass of the aircraft will be decreasing right and <coughs> so that means mass of the uh, due to the consumption of the fuel the mass of the aircraft will be decreasing because there is no way anybody can go out in the uh, level flight right. So, I can write down m dot f is b equal to minus d m by d t that means, the mass of the vehicle, vehicle will be containing passengers fuel right and of course, crew members and uh, other things uh, aircraft itself mass right those are not changing when it is in level flight. So, I can write a d m by d t is equal to d m by d s that is your the range that means, this distance what I am calling it as a s the range this distance I am calling it as a s is range equal to s right. So, therefore, I can write down minus d m by d s and the d s by d t is what nothing but your velocity right or the flight velocity 
and keep in mind that there is no acceleration. So, therefore, flight velocity remains same. Now, what I will do? We will put this over here, this ex, uh, club this equation 20 and 21 and we will get d m by d s is nothing but minus m g divided by eta naught delta s c l by d. Right. What we will do? We will now take this out m d m by you know uh, m and then other terms remaining constant because our overall efficiency you can assume to be constant l by d is constant everything constant including g okay, because g is at one particular altitude whatever it will be. So, you can take that and only uh, then if we integrate this expression right we will get s is equal to minus eta naught delta s c g multiplied by l by d ln m i by m f. What is this m i? m i is the initial mass of vehicle of aircraft I can say vehicle means aircraft and f is the final mass of aircraft right and change in the mass will tell you the uh, you know range that is the range. So, if you look at this range you know equation is known as the brigade range equation right which you uh, some of you might be aware right and keep in mind this range will be dependent on the overall efficiency right and it will be dependent on the heat of combustion and it will be dependent on L by D right. So, now what we will be looking at? We will be looking at basically what kind of this range you know we can maximize this range right and how we can maximize that. We can look at how my overall efficiency is varying with the flight velocity. For example, you might be riding a motorbike, right? Of course, earlier days, earlier days for fuel consumption, there is a green zone, you know, where in your speedometer there will be green zone. If you travel in that range, you will get the least fuel consumption. But if you go beyond that, which of course you can fly at a higher or you can ride at a higher velocity, but you will have to pay penalty, right. And that is true for the life. Each individual is having their own pace of doing the thing. And if you try to catch somebody, then you will get a stress, right. And that is the problem with the modern life. And that is the same thing with the aircraft, right. And if you look at it, it is all natural things, right. So, therefore, one has to look at, let us look at how we can maximize the range or minimize the fuel consumption right for a particular you know initial fuel and uh, final fuel ratio we will be looking at that as i told you that overall efficiency will be dependent on what flight velocity or not right and similarly l by d will be depending on flight velocity or not yes or no right so the overall efficiency will be uh, you know depending on flight velocity, but whether it will be increasing or decreasing. Can you look at your formula or expression? <coughs> so, if you will see it will be goes on increasing because if you look at overall efficiency is equal to V e minus V into V right and of course, you can say a particular exit velocity you know right kind of thing. So, and uh, delta S C remaining constant you know for particular kind of uh, fuel and uh, F is you can assume it to be constant. So, then you will find out overall efficiency is goes on increasing, but whereas L by D is you know may be little bit change is occurring, but it is remaining constant in the some row range of flight Mach number, but after that it decreases and it becomes you know slowly decreases uh, in case of a supersonic flight. You can note that in supersonic uh, flight which is greater than 1, you will find L by D is very very low as compared to the subsonic. This region is the subsonic and this is supersonic. From 
right. Now, if you club this together that eta L by D, you will find, you know, if I just use multiply this and plot, replot it, I will see, I am getting that this thing is goes on increasing and reaching a value over here, you know, if you look at and then it is decreasing and again of course, it goes on increasing, because this is increasing and this is decreasing. So, finally, it will be increasing what is indicated indicating that the range maximum range can be obtained whenever you are flying at a subsonic speed of 0 0.85 around do not go by that exactly 0 0.85 right but around that if we will fly then we will get the maximum range for a same kind of fuel or same amount of fuel you can say right so, that is the reason why all the wrong range passenger aircraft will be in subsonic, not in supersonic. Okay. And when for example, war or something, you will have to fly at supersonic and you will have to pay penalty for that. Okay. So, that is very important as I told you for the life. Whenever emergency is there, that is a different thing, but you cannot make your life as emergency situation right? and what we are doing. So, we will have to be careful about that. Now, we will be looking at another parameter, what we call it as a specific thrust. What is the meaning? That means, thrust per unit mass flow rate of air. What it indicates? Why should we look at this uh, parameter specific thrust? It will tell me the size of my aircraft, right? because the mass flow rate of air is there. The specific thrust is small what it indicates? It indicates for a particular thrust, the mass flow rate of air is higher. If my mass flow rate is higher, what will happen? I can get a higher mass flow rate of air, which is entering into engine at a higher pressure. If I will go for higher pressure, then what will happen? The all these, you know, things, material, you know, I will have to use exotic material or I will have to use whatever material available at this moment right? with a more thickness. That means, weight will increase or I will increase my area. If I will increase my area, cross sectional area of the inlet, then the drag will be more. So, therefore, you know it is a problem. So, size of engine will be higher, you know lot of problem will be coming. Again, the material cost will go up and several other things will happen. So, therefore, it is very important to have a specific thrust as a parameter. So, generally we should have a what you call the higher specific thrust, right. So, that it will be compact engine and then you know you will get higher thrust. That is another very important you know parameter which we will have to look at it that is thrust specific fuel consumption. As the name indicates what it says the amount of thrust produced per unit mass flow rate of fuel consumption right and if i multiply if i divide this by m dot a if i divide it by dot a and that m dot a divided by m dot a you will get f that is fuel air ratio and other one is a specific thrust right but is it there is a very different than what we use in our life for your particularly automobile engines we use that. For example, mileage, right? And of course, nowadays we are talking about kilometer, kilometerage, right? That means how many kilometers it should go a vehicle. I mean, like in a particularly car or for you people, bike will be going per unit per liter of fuel, because the fuel price is going up. That is more important, you know. And there is another important parameter which is not being considered. Uh, particularly aircraft engine of course, not buyer of the automobiles that is the emission. How badly you are polluting the atmosphere where you are living. right? So, that is not being considered by user which is very important aspect and as you people are educated you must be worried about that. Because uneducated people are the business people they would not be worried about it. right? They are ignorant about it. 
So, that is very important point. So, the thrust specific fuel consumption indicates the quality of a of an engine for an aircraft, right? Because the cost, as I call it, you know, money or the vitamin M is more important. So, therefore, it is also a very important parameter. So, <coughs> let us look at how this thrust specific fuel consumption for a turbo engine becomes that is M dot F divided by the thrust. We know that M dot A 1 plus F V E minus V. Keep in mind that here the uh, what you call thrust due to the pressure is being neglected, pressure thrust basically. And uh, what you could see here that means the flight velocity comes into pictures, right. That means this thrust specific fuel consumption will be not only dependent on the jet velocity, but also it will be dependent on the flight velocity, right. And that is also true for your automobile, right. Am I right? As I told you that earlier days there was a range of the, of the speed in which you will get the optimum fuel consumption or the minimum fuel consumption. But after that, whether you go at a lower speed, you will have to you know uh, supply more amount of fuel and if you go at the higher speed, you will have to also pay penalty of you know consuming more fuel. And similarly, in this case it will be and question arises where we will evaluate this TSFC and can I use this TSFC for a uh, you know turbo shaft engine. Can I use this? Because there we are not producing any thrust, we are producing power. So, therefore, we cannot really use that because here by definition it is mass flow rate of mass consumption of you know fuel divided by the thrust. And where we can evaluate this so that I can compare and see that whether it is good or bad for various kinds of engines, even in the same kind of let us say turbojet, there might be various manufacturer, I need to look at it, you know, where I should evaluate this. Should I evaluate at the static condition or should I evaluate at the flight condition? Where? There are two conditions, right? Or I can, you know, it can be there are various places I can come. Generally, it is customary to look at the turbojet and turbo fan particularly at the static condition, right. And another also is there some people uh, evaluate at the what you call the design condition, design flight condition, right, altitude and flight whatever. It is. So, if you look at some number, typical number I have taken TSFC that is 0 0.075 to 0 0.11 kg per Newton hour, right per hour you will be consuming this many kg of fuel, right, for a particular uh, Newton uh, thrust, where turbo fan is very low value if you look at that as compared to the turbo Z. Of course, if you go for turbo prop engine, it will be much lower, right. And that is the reason why turbo fan being used in the long range, you know, uh, passenger aircraft instead of turbo jet engine or turbo. Whereas, the ramjet you cannot really evaluate as static. So, you will have to evaluate at certain design Mach numbers and altitude. If you look at if I take these numbers some range it is much higher as compared to any gas turbine engines, okay, turbo jet, turbo prop, turbo fan any one of them. So, you should keep this in mind and uh, for as I told you earlier the TSFC for turbo prop and turbo shaft engines becomes basically. Uh, what do you call brake specific fuel consumption, we call it, right, and that is m dot f by the shaft power. And this brake specific fuel consumption is being used routinely for automobile engine as well, right. And but however, in case of a turbo prop engine, particularly, there will be certain amount of thrust which is being produced by the expansion of gas in the jet, right. So, how to take care of that? Because then this is not good enough for the turbo prop engine, the BSFC. For the turbo shaft, where the shaft power is being obtained, it can be good enough. But for turbo prop engine, it is not because 
some of the you know thrust can be obtained by expanding the gas in the nozzle. Nozzle means exhaust nozzle up from the engine, right. So, therefore, how will take care of it? I need to take care of how much thrust power is being produced by the expansion of gas in a nozzle. For, or for that, I will have to use another one which is known as effective brake specific fuel consumption. If you look at it, it is same as that m dot f divided by p s h and whereas, this thrust you know is being added that is the hot jet thrust right. Okay. The T h this is a h stand for hot right thrust and V because the propeller will be producing some thrust that is taken care by P s h right and whereas, the, this will be producing some this thing. So, that will be different. So, this is being used right. Now, we have looked at various what do you call the performance parameters. That means, these are the performance parameters we need to you know use for evaluating how good engine is, how it is performing and under what condition. But now, we need to look at air breathing engines and understand what is happening, because if you look at here we are not worried about what it contains, whether compressor is there, turbine is there or nozzle is there, we are not bothered, right. It we have taken as a propulsive duct and look at it overall what is happening as a engine. Now, we will be looking at air breathing engine now, air breathing means which breathes air not like rocket engine which will be carrying the oxidizer with itself. Now, and air breathing engine can be divided into two categories, one is based on the gas turbine engine power plant that is known as gas turbine jet engines and there is another class which is called as a ram jet engine and scram jet engines right, where it will be devoid of any gas turbine power plant. Gas turbine means compressor you know turbine that is basically gas turbine right. I mean which will be of course, compressor turbine will be there for your steam as well, water as well no okay, water uh, as well right. Okay, but there we are not considering, we are considering with gas. So, therefore, let us look at turbo jet engine and what is really happening here. Turbo jet engine is having you know various components, one portion is the air intake, this is the compressor, of course, this is the axial compressor, there is also centrifugal compressors and uh, but nowadays people are using preferring the axial compressor, but some engines are there particularly turbo prop kind of engines which will be using centrifugal. And this is the combustion chamber where you will be burning the fuel and uh, you know without really uh, uh, loss of pressures generally people try for it and then this high you know high temperature and high pressure gas is expanded in the turbine and which is again expanded further in the exhaust nozzle to get the thrust. So, if you look at whatever you know work being derived from this hot high temperature and high pressure gas by the turbine is meant just to run the compression. So, if you look at what is the function of turbine, turbine is just to supply the power to the compression right and the all the thrust of this turbojet engine is being used or is being harnessed by expanding the gas in a nozzle. Similarly, the turbo fan engine which is little different and uh, if you look at this uh, compressor, combustion and turbine is known as the gas generator right, it will be generating the gas right. And uh, the gas generator is there in this case, apart from that there is a fan here right. And of course, the compressor is there, this is your compressor right and this is your what you call uh, compressor is also in this place is there is a quite big and then there will be some turbine right, turbine is there and combustion chamber. Right. So, what I am saying this is a, a basically is uh, different than that, but what is happening to the fluid which is entering in this engine? 
because uh, uh, as it the air in, uh, enters into this compressor, the pressure its pressure will be increasing and then when in combustion its temperature will be again increasing right. There will be also increase in the temperature when it is passing through air or not uh, through, through the compressor or not. There will be even when air intake is not shown properly here, but in this case there will be also increase in pressure so also the temperature. Which pressure? Is it total or static? Huh? Static, right? What about total? Actually, in air intake, if you look at this will be the total temperature, you know, we assume to be remaining constant because we say that heat losses will be negligibly small, right. So, therefore, the total temperature, so also the total pressure of course, it will decrease because of some losses in fluid dynamic from aerodynamic point of view. But however, there will be increase in total pressure in the compressor, so also uh, total pressure will be almost uh, you know uh, remain constant, but however, it will be little bit lower because the objective is to decrease the change in total pressure in the compressor and the turbine. Turbine of course, the total pressure has to what will happen? It will be lowering down because you will extract the work out of it. So, uh, if you look at what I my, my uh, you know uh, discussion uh, objective discussion to make you aware that properties are changing you know in a very drastic ways, how to take care of this, how to you know carry out a analysis is very important and it is quite complex. Not only the properties are uh, temperature and pressure, also the composition of the air is getting changed particularly whenever the combustion is whenever it is passing through the combustors right. So, therefore, that has to be taken care and if you look at the turboprop engine, the turboprop engine is basically you know uh, the air will be passing through this uh, propeller and then air intake and of course, the compressor and combustion chamber turbine and expanded in nozzle. You keep in mind that this whatever the work being harnessed by this turbine will be not only the running the compressor, but also it will be running the propeller through a gear, gear box, because the compressor is being run at a very high rpm, whereas the propeller cannot really you know run at that rpm, because of several problems right. So, therefore, we need to use a gear box right gearbox will reduce the speed and you know of this uh, couple I mean like you know uh, from the compressor to the this thing or the shaft. So, therefore, in this case uh, most of the thrust is being produced by propeller, some of the thrust will be used by you know being produced by in the nozzle you know that is a residual thrust what we call or it will be very small quantity as compared to the propeller. So, if you look at this kind of these three kinds of engine we will be discussing and we will be discussing also the ramjet right. Let us look at we need to basically look at uh, this air breathing engine cycle analysis right. Why we really want to do carry out this engine cycle analysis you know basically what we are looking at we are looking at thermodynamic cycle analysis right what we you might have studied in your BTEC and also you might have studied in your uh, uh, you know even thermodynamics right. And that is the Breton cycle and the, what we will be doing we will be also looking at Breton cycle why you will you know maybe around uh, 7 to 8 lectures we will be talking about it what really will get. We are not going to get anything as a matter of fact am I right, am I right or wrong. The Breton cycle same cycle you know like the compressor then uh, combustors and then turbine what we will be looking at there are several questions comes into picture. How to enhance our thrust? Is there any way we can enhance the thrust or is there any way we can uh, reduce the TSFC? Is there any way we can enhance our propulsive efficiency and overall efficiency? What are the parameters that will be governing right? As an engineer we need to know that, but is it that a cycle analysis which is being carried out in your thermodynamic course help you? or can give you directly it will definitely help you because that is the basis of all what we will be doing now. 
but generally it is not you know being considered there except looking at you know thermal efficiency. But what are the parameters that governs you know is very important that we need to look at what kind of turbine material we will be judging and what is the effect of you know like altitude, what will be the effect of flight velocities all those things we need to look at it. So, as I told you that it is quite complex as I told you just now I mean like that the whenever the fluid is passing through this compressor, combustion chamber, turbine it is undergoing lot of changes. Now, how to handle that when the composition of air is changing, the temperature is changing, pressure is changing you know it is quite difficult to handle. So, we will have to uh, first uh, carry out making some assumptions right. That means, we can divide this engine cycle analysis based on the level of simplification because we need to simplify that right. What we will be doing? We will making some assumption, we will assume the processes are ideal. That means, as if air is moving, nothing is there, like no combustion, no change of properties, and then processes are isentropic in nature, you know, a lot of places like compression, expansion, other things. There is no pressure drop in combustion, all those things we will be using, and that is a simplification, and other one is based on purpose. What is our objective? Why we will do this analysis, right? that also based on that we can divide the engine cycle analysis. So, <coughs> what we will be looking at is ideal cycle analysis where we will do all those assumptions just now I told that we will be using the air as if passing through that and you are adding some heat there is nothing no you know really combustion is taking place, but you are adding heat that which you are done earlier for your uh, what you call ideal cycle right in your thermodynamics course. Then we will be adding those you know like a processes which is actual right and then we call it as a real cycle analysis right. And how we will do that real cycle analysis is very important one. And then we will be looking at parametric cycle and because we need to understand vary those parameters which will be governing the you know thrust and then TSFC and then other efficiencies other parameters and play around it and see what is happening right. We may not have an engine, but we can play around and see that imaginary engine and look at it like you know like in your Antaragni people are doing imaginary things right, imaginary stories right okay, or fantasy. So, it similarly you will be thinking my engine will be like that these are the parameter what I need to do. Then once you design the engine we need to find out that what, what are these you know uh, how these parameters will be affecting my thrust and other parameters right. Variables what, how these variables which will be affecting my thrust and other performance parameters that is known as of design analysis right. Like what we call it engine performance analysis and engine permanently we call it as a off design analysis and this parametric cycle analysis is known as the on design analysis, because we have not designed, but for designing we look at it. So, in this course what we will be looking at, we will be basically looking at these three analysis you know which is I mean together, because ideal cycle you know, but I will be looking at ideal and parametric cycle together right. And then I will be looking at the real cycle also you might have studied we will be doing that and adding this parametric you know variation and look at it. But however, engine performance cycle is not a part of this course if some of you are interested you can look at it in some other place right. So, let us look at how we can carry out this parametric cycle analysis that means, what we will be doing? We will be looking at parametric cycle analysis first we will be considering ideal cycle then we will be considering the real cycle. So, as I told you parametric cycle analysis is very important, because here the flight conditions like altitude, flight velocities. When I talk about altitude, it is basically the temperature and pressure at a particular altitude which will be varying right. And so, also the flight velocity how it is varying, how it is affecting the thrust and uh, your other performance parameters right, that we will be looking at it. And then 
we will be look at what are the design limitations. The, what are the design limitation we are having? You know turbine inlet temperature, you do not have material. Of course, if you can develop better material, you can go for a higher temperature in the turbine, because the most critical part of turbine material, you know the, is the in the engine is the turbine material and also the combustor liners, right. So, that is a limitation, how we live with limitation, how we will you know do that and what is the way to how it will be varying this performance parameter we need to look at. And similarly, the component performances like you know for example, air take in, in efficiencies, compressor efficiencies, turbine efficiencies, nozzle efficiencies, how it will be affecting your result, right. That is the way we need to because we all the time we will be trying to improve the efficiency of this component, so that overall efficiency of the engine will be increasing. But how to do that and what is the effect we will be looking at and this is the very important one that is the design choices like compressor pressure ratio, or turbine expansion ratio and other parameters. So, what I am saying we are looking at the same cycle analysis thermodynamically from a different perspective, how to design and when we design we need to know the whole envelope of where it will be we will be operating which is the best and how to choose that and develop a judgment. Judgment is very important right not only for the what you call design or the cycle analysis, but also for the life and what we are lacking today is the proper judgment in life. So, therefore, both are interlinked and let us look at how to go about it and objective of parametric cycle analysis as I told you it is engine performance parameter, thrust specific thrust and thrust specific fuel consumption. We will be looking at propulsive, thermal and overall efficiency. These are the parameters just to and we will be looking at component parameters like pressure ratio turbine temperature ratio, turbine inlet temperature of course, turbine you know like you can look at uh, turbine expansion ratio they can be linked and we will be looking at how this flight environment or I call it flight envelope you know will be affecting the performance of the engine. So, if you look at whole gamut of this thing we will be looking at in this parametric cycle analysis. I believe or I assume that you must may not have this way of looking at the things, right. Because this is a whole things which will be can be used as a very important tool for a designer, right, of aircraft engine. So, we will be looking at that. For that, let us look at general notation, like what we will be using for our analysis. If this is a very complex one I have taken, it is a basically turbo fan engines with afterburner. If you look at from 0 to 9, I use the station number for the core engine, this is known as core engine, right. This is a 0 to 1, because 1 will be somewhere here, right. You might be thinking why 0 and there is no 1. If you look at supersonic air intake, if you look at the supersonic air intake will be 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 will be subsonic air intake, right. Which particularly for fighter aircraft all those things is required, right. Similarly, 2 to 3 and sometimes some people use here 3.5, because this is your high pressure or low pressure compressor and this is high pressure compressor, right, this one. And similarly, you know 3 to 4 is your combustor and 4 to 5 is your turbine, but 4 to 4.5 is your high pressure turbine and 4.25 is your low pressure turbine and 5 to 6 is your basically you can say kind of a what to call the basically 6 could have been here like it is a uh, afterburner and there is a pipe jet pipe will be there for mixing and other thing and 7 to 9 is basically nozzle. You might be thinking why where is the 8? 8 is there whenever you use the conversion diversion nozzle right. The throat region is known as the 8. Similarly, for the other engine that is 13 to 9 and this is a standard which is known as aerospace recommended you know kind of things standards being used internationally right. That is why we are using that. 
So, another thing we need to look at the notation what we will be using that we will be using basically pressure ratio and when you take talk about pressure ratio of a component x that is nothing but ratio of total pressure ratio at the exit of component x divided by total pressure ratio at the inlet of component x right. That means, basically if I look at a compressor it will be basically at the exit right in this case it will be basically P T 3 by P T 2 right. And similarly, total temperature if I look at for a compressor, if I say this is pi c then only P T 3 by P T 2 right. That means, this will be the thing. So, total temperature ratio will be you know basically for a x component will be total temperature ratio at the exit of component x divided by total temperature ratio of component so, if you look at we will be using these symbols right in place of x for diffuser D that is basically air intake and compressor C and burner and combustor will be using B pi B right uh, for turbine we will be using pi T, nozzle will be using pi N and fan will be using small f. So, these are the notation which we will be using and free steam total temperature and pressure ratio can be defined as tau r that is T T naught divided by T you know this per isentropic relationship is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 m naught square and pi r is equal to P T naught divided by P naught the same thing 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 m naught square gamma minus and basically isentropic relationship I have written in terms of flight Mach number. So, we will uh, with this will stop over here and uh, maybe some of the uh, assumptions I will be talking about in the next class that is ideal cycle analysis and then we will be talking about ramjet engine to start with.